Leon is back to his normal, friendly, and sociable self again, finally. He comes over to the glass to greet me and to have a chat often these days. A couple of weeks now after Leon's molt, I tried the smelt again, and he absolutely loves it. The smell, the taste, everything. This is probably gross to some, but I've noticed Leon likes to eat his food head first, if it has a head. He'll also flip the head-on shrimp I feed around to eat it head first. Not every time, but most of the time. He devoured the whole smelt, so I gave him a mussel in the shell too. And I guess he was done with dinner for a while because he buried that in the sand. The next day, the mussel is moved over to the far left corner of the aquarium where Leon dumps a lot of his dishes. And the tiny glass shrimp are having a party trying to bust into it. <laughs> Good luck. Another smelt. He loves them. As you can see, it didn't take long for his trademark avatar patch to come back. He wants to eat constantly right now, hand feeding a piece of raw Argentine shrimp. He has a hard time reaching up and getting it at this tight angle with the rock wall here, but switches from his big claws to his smaller front leg pinchers and grabs it right up. We're all capable of learning from experience, and, and so is Leon. Watch this. The next day, he climbs up on the rocks and grabs the shrimp. This was me absolutely being lazy and not wanting to take the top cover completely off to feed him, and Leon adjusted. Even after all the shrimp, he scours the aquarium looking for more. Molting makes a boy hungry. Since Leon's molt, his swimmerettes are back to buzzing full speed. I've noticed a couple of other things after this molt too, about Leon's old shell. After the molt, one of his antennae looked like it had a couple of small nicks out of it. I thought that they had happened during the molt or something, but when I went back and checked his old shell, the same antenna had the same nicks in it. So this is an old wound, maybe from being caught or maybe from being shipped to the grocery store. And I noticed this small hole in a shell here by his tail. This is him before he molted, and here it is on his old shell after the molt. And it's also on his new shell. I'll have to get him some jewelry to put in there, like an earring or a piercing stud. So, these things get completely duplicated when he molds, which is interesting to see. They're not repaired. Here is some of the love Leon's friends have been sharing on social media recently. It's always fun to see the creativity, shout outs, and where Leon's shirts and hoodies are being worn around the world. The little anemones seem to be doing well. There are still only two or three, and they're definitely not taking over the aquarium like weeds. I'm sure they're getting plenty of Leon's crumbs at dinner time, 
but out of curiosity I tried feeding this one directly. So I put a couple of very small sinking fish pellets in the tongs and lowered them down to it. This didn't go very well. The fish pellet wouldn't release from the tong and the anemone sucked back in with the tong hovering over it, though the anemone doesn't have any eyes. Hmm. Obviously the glass shrimp scooped up the food immediately. And one of the little crabs comes out of the rock pile and starts looking for the pellets too. So I decided to try and feed it with a tong. I lower the tong and the little crab comes right to it, but knocks the tiny pellet off, then goes down in the rubble of shells to find it. So then I switch to a better tool and go back and try again with the little anemone. This time I used a long clear pipette. I loaded some tiny fish pellets into the tube and slowly lowered it down to the anemone. Like a pro shortstop, it snatches up a pellet and pulls it right in. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there though. And the little crab comes and steals the anemone's dinner. There's nothing the anemone can do. I'm pretty sure right now it's feeling just like I felt when my motorcycles were stolen. Then I tried to feed the little crab something larger with the tong, a piece of shrimp. As I bring the tong down, the crab smells the food, but then ducks away. So I release the piece of shrimp, and it immediately grabs it and takes it back into its lair. But look what happens immediately. Watch the shadow come over. More nightmare material. Look how huge Leon's claws are compared to the tiny crab. This is not good. If he catches one, it seriously lights out for the crab. I don't think he's after the crab though. I think he's looking for the food himself. Leon goes on a rampage to try and find the little piece of shrimp the crab has. He torments the crab and hounds it on both sides of the rock wall, digging his arms into the rock pile and all the crevices left and right. He's reaching way back in there. He pulls the shells out of the pile and checks everything. Look how far back in there he's reaching. Who knows where the little crab is right now? The problem is he smells the food and he knows it's down in there. I've never seen this kind of behavior before in Leon. Just his persistence in hunting like this for a small piece of shrimp. He's always fed well, but he's just finished a major molt and eating is all he's thinking about right now. This shiny shell is moving, so the little crab must be right there now. Always staying out of Leon's reach, fortunately. This goes on for a while to the point where I decide I need to just feed Leon another whole shrimp just so that he'll stop searching all into the rocks and the little crab's tunnels. Hopefully this aggression will slow down in a couple of weeks. This molt has been an interesting one. These crabs came in as larvae in the oyster shells I picked up on the beach. And by the time I was able to recognize they were even here, they were the size of my fingernail. So, they're here now. The next day, I made another trip over to the seafood market to find Leon some things to hopefully keep him off the little crabs, like more mussels in the shell that he can crack open and eat and entertain himself with. Though the cats are all basically indoor cats now, they do find plenty of entertainment from the outdoor world. The chicken went back home which unfortunately, I guess, is best. She belongs at a neighbor's house down the street. Chickens eat so many bugs, she would likely starve out my Venus flytraps anyway. When I had the koi farm, I had chickens there, and they would pick flying bugs straight out of the air. They were so much fun, though. I guess we all have to make decisions. Would I rather have a mystery chicken, or would I rather have the Venus flytraps I've been cultivating for a few years now? Part of my spring chores has been repotting a lot of these. 
Here's a close look at a flytrap rhizome and the root structure. Looking nice and healthy, these roots just anchor the plant and also grow straight down seeking a constant acidic water source that is low in nutrients and low in minerals. This fly is about to fly around and find out. Now though, another neighbor's cat has taken the chicken's place, peeking in through the glass and hanging out by the koi pond. It's an unfixed male cat, unfortunately, so obviously that creates issues with the cats here in this house, particularly when it sprays by the glass and our cats in here can smell it. It's a tough situation because it's not our cat and we have no say in how it's kept. What would you do? While Leon is chilling in his cold aquarium water, I break out for some summer fun. I do some hiking to check out a few secluded waterfalls and some summer water spots and swimming holes. I personally like looking under the water as much as above the water. This is the upper Chattahoochee River. Let's see what's here. Some fish types a lot of us don't get to see. This dam has been here for years, which unfortunately makes the river a one-way street for fish. They can't go upstream past this dam. So the big trout congregate here, rainbow trout, brown trout, which is actually native to Europe, and brook trout, which is the only trout actually native to this area. Lake Burton. I lived very close by as a kid. The brim have always been curious here. Brim is sort of a catch-all word we people from the south use for several types of sunfish. Spotted, redbreast, bluegill, pumpkin seed. This is interesting and kind of sad. In the next lake downstream, I notice these brim nests. The males will build a nest and the females will come in and lay her eggs and then the males will guard the nest until the eggs hatch. These fish are all really aggressive during nesting time, so I thought it might be interesting to put a camera down by their nest and just see how they interact with it. What I saw immediately though is not what I was expecting. This brim has a hook stuck right up through his upper jaw. Who knows how this happened? Could be the fishermen couldn't get the hook out, so just cut the line. Or it could be they tied a really bad knot, and when they caught this fish, the knot came loose and left the hook in the fish. Who knows? Sad to see, though. But this fish seems to be functioning well with the metal baggage. And it was done with my camera in its nest, and attacked it. I had nothing with me today to even attempt to help this little fish, so I went on about my day. The rest of the afternoon, though, I was thinking about what the options were. So when I got back home, I went to the store and picked up a few things. Hmm. 
I would never feed Leon store-bought worms like this. Who knows what pesticides, antibiotics, hormones, or heavy metals they're loaded with. Because of my schedule, I couldn't make it back for another couple of days, but I was going to head back there and at least try to do something to help that little fish. So, two days later, I made the hour drive back over to the lake. Who knows if the fish would even still be there anymore. But when I got there, it was still there, guarding its nest, and it still had the hook in its mouth. So, I go fishing to try and catch this fish using a hook that already has a hook in its mouth. It wasn't taking the bait though. Maybe it did learn from the previous hook. Its little friend takes a jab at the bait though. Another option might be a throw net with weights on the bottom, but that would risk ruining the nest. No need to try and save one brim and kill hundreds and hundreds of eggs in the process. This little brim is just not interested in any of my help. It has hundreds of eggs to guard. And who knows, maybe it likes the piercing. <laughs> yeah, okay. I just hate being beaten, especially by a little fish. Oh well, sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. It was a fun way to spend a part of a nice summer day though, playing in the water, doing some fishing, and trying to do some good at the same time. That's a win-win. While we're here, let's see if we can find any of Leon's third cousins twice removed. That didn't take long. It's always fun browsing antique and thrift stores. We came across this interesting plate the other day. A lobster on a plate is just not me and Leon's vibe. An interesting piece to look at though. On my coffee run the other morning, I noticed a road crew found the little road cone tree and chopped it out. Oh well, nice run, little tree. Another thing about nature that always blows my mind is camouflage. It's just not possible that it's a random occurrence, is it? What do you think? 
deck time on a beautiful spring night. The koi are loving the warmth and enjoy hanging out with us. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know. They just want to be fed. I like to think they're being social and enjoying evening family time, though. All is not calmness and tranquility, though, with the cats. Sometimes things happen, like this broken plant pot. None of them will confess to who broke it, though. They fuss and they fight with each other, but always seem to have each other's backs. And they never rat another cat out when something gets broken. We've just about gotten to the point where the cats can all come and go freely throughout the house whenever they want. There are still some smack fests. <laughs> There's always going to be smack fests because they're cats. Baxter has gotten into restoring vintage motorcycles too, so he likes showing me all the details I missed and the things I could have done better. He even watches Supercross with me, Abby too. Okay, they mostly sleep. Here I offer Leon another whole smelt, from my hand to his, and he snaps it right up. The largest of the crabs comes out at feeding time every night now too, despite Leon's rampage, so I offer it a piece of shrimp by hand. It's not quite ready for hand to claw feeding yet. It takes its little dinner plate and disappears back into its layer of secret tunnels. When Leon finishes his dinner, he goes over and tries to find the piece of shrimp I gave the little crab. Again, the crab's secret tunnels run all through and under this pile of coral rocks. It can even pop out at the back of Leon's cave and check and see what he's up to. Leon is persistent, just like before. He smells the shrimp and checks all over the aquarium for it. This is probably where the little crabs are going to lose in the battle in this little ecosystem. Leon will search and bulldoze through until he finds the food he's smelling. Like I mentioned earlier, hopefully this is just a temporary thing and not the everyday appetite of the new larger Leon. I'll keep you updated and we'll see how things shake out in the next video. If you want to wear some Leon and share some Leon love in your world, go to leonthelobster.myshopify.com. Leon has had some copycats recently, unfortunately. LeonTheLobster.MyShopify.com is the only place you can get authentic Leon merch, which helps keep him fed and provides the aquarium supplies he needs. <laughs> yeah, Baxter too and those other 10 cats. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share it with other friends you think might like meeting Leon and following his journey. We'll see you soon. <laughs>